Hi everybody and welcome to Ask the Farmer, Ask the Flower Farmer live um, with the Gardener's Workshop. I'm Dave Dowling. I'm filling in today for Lisa Mason Ziegler who's taking the afternoon off. If you don't know anything about me, my name again is Dave Dowling. I had a cut flower farm in Maryland for 20 years and then I went to work for Ball Seed or actually for Edney Flower Bulb, then Glockner Company and now with Ball Seed or Ball Color Link as a sales rep for customers growing cut flowers all across the U.S. Um, so if we're asking questions today, if you look on your screen in the bottom right hand corner, there's a little circle with a question mark in it. That's where you put in your questions. Then I'll be able to answer your questions um, and I can be able to show the question on the screen so other people can read it also. So um, one thing I want to point out is that it's springtime now and everyone should be up busy getting their gardens ready, their fields ready, planting, uh, planting seeds, cool flowers. If you're in an area that didn't get your cool flowers planted last fall, plant them really early in the spring so they get a nice cool start. And do we have any questions yet? Let's see. Not yet. Um, one thing also, I do the online class with the Gardener's Workshop called Bulbs, Perennials, Woodies, and More. You can find out more information about that at the link at thegardenersworkshop.com. And I see some questions there. Uh, Georgina is asking, what vegetables can we start in the three-quarter inch soil blocks? That would be any of your bigger seeds, things like squash, cucumbers, um, large seeds. You wouldn't start anything uh, like a radish or uh, smaller things in a large block. But the three-quarter inch block, you should be able to plant anything that's got a uh, decent sized seed to it. Uh, the rustical garden is asking, do you see dried flowers continuing to trend? Most definitely. Um, there's dried flowers everywhere now, lots of people growing them. Um, when I was at the San Francisco flower market last week, I even saw a place that had dried flowers there. So yes, dried flowers are definitely on their way back. So I recommend uh, planting dried flowers or varieties for dried flowers that you're actually going to grow specifically to dry, not just drying leftovers all the time. Um, Wild Bunch Blossoms wants to know spacing for peonies. Um, you can do peonies two ways, either in single rows, where you uh, space them about 18 to 24 inches apart in a single row, or you can do a double row where they're alternating kind of in a zigzag pattern, still 18 to 24 inches apart, um, going down the row, but the rows would be about 24 inches apart. Uh, Amy and Cave, uh, can you explain more about the cool season plants? Basically, the cool season plants or cool season annuals or what Lisa calls cool flowers are annual flowers that can uh, survive a winter, usually in zone six, sometimes zone five and warmer. And the idea is you plant them in the fall, either direct sown in September or early October or transplanted in late September, early October. So they get established and get a root, good root system before the cold weather comes on. And if you forgot to plant them in the fall or didn't get them planted last fall, you can still plant them in the spring, but you want to get them out there early. So if your last frost date is April 15th, you should be out in the field planting March 15th, transplanting some of those cool season annuals that can take the cool start. Things like snapdragon stock, things like that, uh, straw flowers, status. Just protect them on a really cold night if you can get down below 30. But giving them that early start in the cool weather, either in the fall or late winter, early spring, will give you a much bigger, better plant when it comes time to harvest your flowers. And Lisa does have a book called Cool Flowers. It's available at thegardenersworkshop.com or anywhere else that you can find books online. But you can buy it directly from Lisa at thegardenersworkshop.com. Uh, Perennial Farms LSC. I took your lovely course. Well, that's great. I'm glad you took it. Uh, I wish I had more details on tulips because my tulips were a fail again this year. So many short ones after following the info as far as cooling. Planting the ground around here, first of December in zone 9B. What am I doing wrong? First off, if you're in 9B, you're going to need to use totally 5C cooled tulips. Uh, you don't have enough cold weather to give them any additional cooling in the ground after they're planted like you would get in a zone 6 or 7 you know, farther north. 9B is pretty warm. You basically have a very mild winter, hardly ever getting below freezing. 
So you would want to use the not the five C bulbs, which have had all the cooling they need. Um, you can usually get those delivered to you in mid December to mid January. Plant them, water them really well, and they should start growing right away. Um, the only thing is, if by chance you have a, a, a freaky freeze storm, a cold front come through and give you a freeze, you would want to protect them from a really cold freeze in the uh, like 28 degrees or colder. Uh, Julie Boli, my annual started in three quarter inch blocks, seems you're growing very slowly. Use the Gardener's Workshop recipe for the blocks and fertilize them weekly. Do I need to bump them up to larger size blocks? Um, the larger size blocks wouldn't make much difference. If they're growing slowly, it's probably either not enough light or enough um, temperature, warmth. Um, it also depends on what you're growing. Some things grow very slow. If you're growing Lysianthus or Eucalyptus, they're really slow growing. Something like a Zinnia or Sunflower is really fast. So it depends on the crop you're growing, how fast they're going to grow. Um, one thing you might do is uh, just do a Google search for culture sheet for the variety of plant you're growing. So if you look up a culture sheet for Lysianthus, it's going to tell you it's going to take 10 to 12 weeks to grow a plug. But something like a zinnia or a ageratum, might only, a zinnia might take two and a half to three weeks to be full size ready to plant out. An ageratum might take seven or eight weeks. So you need to know how long you expect that plant to grow before you have it big enough to be able to transplant it. Your plants might not be growing slow. Um, it's just what they, it's a smaller, slower growing plant. Sugar blooms in Tennessee. I need foliage now. Can I harvest snapdragons before they bloom or they wilt in the vase because they don't have a third of the buds open? These are snowflake snaps planted last fall in zone 7B. The problem with picking snaps too soon is the top buds may bend over and not hydrate so you have a droopy tip on it. Uh, the best thing you do is pick a few and try it. Do a trial, do a test, pick them, hydrate them, put them on your kitchen table and see how they look. That's the best thing you can do for almost any flower that you're not sure about the harvest stage or if you can harvest it, or if it holds up. Um, go ahead and pick some and do your own vase test. Uh, Smoflo wants to know, can I, when can I divide 20-year-old peonies? Anytime they're dormant, so as long as they're not sprouted in the field yet, you can dig them up and divide them now, or anytime after the frost in the fall. So basically anytime over the winter when they're dormant, you can dig and divide them. Just know that when you do divide them, if you divide them down to small three to five eye sections. It might take a couple years before they bloom again. But if you were to take a 20 year old peony and dig it up and cut it into three or four sections, you'd be getting flowers much sooner because you'd be planting it. Each plant you're putting back in the ground might be seven or eight or even 10 eyes on it. Uh, uh, Julie with her uh, small seedlings, uh, her snapdragons are still small. Um, could be fertilizer, you said you're using it. Um, my guess is if there's too much water, then they won't grow roots because they um, the water's too easy to get, so they're not growing roots looking for water. So make sure you, the soil dries out between watering, make sure they're getting enough light, and make sure they're uh, warm enough. And Panda Farms LLC, how is the best way to fertilize for ranunculus grown outside zone 9B when it's very rainy all winter and they don't need any extra water. Um, if you could add a granular fertilizer, um, so then you're not actually any, adding any more water to the soil, you're just adding the fertilizer, then the rain will wash in. Um, that's about the only thing you can do is to add a dry fertilizer that'll wash in with the rain. Or try and fertilize when there's a little bit less rain. Or if you were using a liquid fertilizer like uh, fish emulsion or the miracle Grow type fertilizer, Mix it up stronger than uh, stronger than the label says. Put it out, but make sure it's going to rain immediately after it's put on. Otherwise, you might burn the foliage. But if you mix your fertilizer up kind of strong or heavy and don't put as much liquid on the bed and then let it rain in right away. Sunny Hill Flower Farm. I am zone 9A, which is down somewhere really warm, and I have 12 inch tall cosmos and they have buds on them. Should I pinch them or wait? Um, depends what variety you have. Hopefully you are order, growing either the Versailles or Double Click or Seashells and not the one called Sensation. Sensation uh, cosmos are not a good cut flower variety and they often will bloom um, in the plug tray or bloom early because they bloom depending on the length of the day and they don't bloom in the middle of the summer. But the Versailles, 
and double click are day length neutral, so they bloom when they get the right age. But back to your 12 inch tall cosmos, yes, definitely pinch them because you don't want a 12 inch tall flower. Um, but if it is the sensation variety, or there's also a lot of newer varieties on the market that are short bedding plant, they only grow 12 or 15 inches tall, those aren't gonna get tall no matter what you do to them. So it's important to make sure you grow the right variety. And then if you do have cosmos, I recommend planting them out, pinching them when they're six or eight inches tall, and make sure you use support netting because they're still gonna grow then another four to five feet tall. But use the Versailles or double click varieties are the best ones to use. Uh, let's see, how many leaf sets should there be before you pinch plants for bushy growth and how low do you pinch? It all depends on the variety of the flower. Um, something like a snapdragon, if you want to pinch that, you want to pinch it and leave six leaves or th three pairs of leaves. So then you're getting about six stems per plant. Something like a zinnia, you can pinch a little bit higher um, when it's maybe six or eight or ten inches tall. Um, but basically, you want to when you're pinching a plant, you're determining how many new stems you're going to get. And every leaf should become a new stem. So if you leave six leaves, you're going to get six stems. Leave eight leaves, you're going to get eight stems. Um, so that's what we're going to aim for, getting six to eight stems per plant after you pinch. Well, here's a good one. Tips for handling aphids on seedlings inside. That can be a tough one. Um, the chances of you getting ladybugs in there would be great. If you could buy some ladybugs somewhere, you should have to mail order those. Um, I occasionally see them at garden centers, at a good garden center, not Home Depot, but a true garden center in the springtime. If you release some ladybugs, that will work. Other than that, you can try and wash them off. Um, it all depends on how soon your plants are ready to go outdoors. If you just a few aphids, sometimes it works just to take those few plants that have aphids and trash those two or three plants to save the rest of them and keep the aphids from spreading. But definitely you don't want to do something to eliminate them or they will take over your seedlings. Uh, sugar blooms in Tennessee, her viburnum nantucket is beautiful. There's buds are starting to open. Will they shed in the bouquet? I have a customer wanting in a mixed bouquet for Easter centerpieces. Um, some viburnum don't shed. Um, the one way to tell is if the flower is kind of firm and I don't want to say beefy, but more texture or more substance to the flower petal. And there's some that are really small, frail looking flowers that blow apart in the wind. So you have to just look at your plant really closely and see. And Easter is still five days away. Go out and cut one today and, and do a vase test until you would need to make that bouquet. And actually, the Nantucket variety, I'm not familiar with that variety, so I'm, I can't answer exactly what will happen with it when you pick it. Oh, here's a good question from Nicole and Jenna Colette. Would you put your peonies divided would you put your peonies divided right back in the ground or store them over winter and replant in the spring? Replant them right away. Um, it's best to get the peonies divided and put right back in the ground the same day if possible. Storing the cooler is just going to um, slow down the growth in the spring. Because if you're dividing in the fall and replant right away, those peony roots are going are to grow more feeder or the hair roots over the winter. Storing the cooler, they won't grow any more of the feeder roots. So the feeder roots are what are needed for the plant to take up water. So replanting in the fall is much better than holding it in the cooler and planting the uh, planting the spring, planting in the spring, I'm trying to read the next question and talk at the same time. Um, Flower Cafe Farm, when do I plant my stock seedlings outside? The stock seedlings can take a light frost, and by light frost, frost, I mean when the temperature at night is 35, 36, and you get a frost. If your temperature is down in the 20s or 30 or below, you could have them out there, but you would want to cover and protect them. And when you cover and protect, you want to do it without actually covering the um, without the fabric touching the plant, you want it up on hoops. It also works to turn pots upside down or crates upside down over the plants, then put the fabric on top of that. Um, the other important thing is whenever you're planting something out in the springtime and there's still a chance for frost, don't plant out today if you know it's going to freeze tonight. Wait a day or two when you're going to have warmer weather for a few days. So they have a few days to get acclimated to the weather after you planted them. And also, it's always a good idea to harden off the plants by putting them outside for a couple hours at a time for a few days before you actually plant them. Um, Garden Journey wants to know tips for successful, for successful conditioning of Orlea. Um, Orlea, you got to make sure you pick it before the flowers get old because it will shed if the flowers are aged. 
Um, you want to pick them as soon as they open on the plant, um, put them into water, let them sit for a couple hours, and go in the cooler. But it's important to pick fresh new flowers. If the flowers are old, they're going to shed no matter what you do. Um, as far as wilting, that's where you want to make sure you get them in water right away to hydrate and then put them in the cooler. Um, Brower 6829. I need info on grow lights. I'm trying soil blocking with zinnias and gumfrina and other cut flowers. How much wattage do I use? I'm looking at Amazon lights and I'm overwhelmed. And also how far above the seedings do lights go? Well, now that so many lights are um, LED, wattage doesn't come into play anymore. It used to be that a 100 watt bulb was much brighter than a 60 watt bulb, but now a, uh, a uh, LED light may only be five watts, but it's still brighter than a 100 watt regular bulb. So what you wanna do is look at the light output. I recommend getting the full spectrum LED lights. They're more expensive when you first buy them, but they'll last basically forever. Um, and they're gonna give you more, more better. That sounds like a little kid talking. They'll give you more light that is better. Um, and as far as the height away from the plants, if you're using the old fluorescent lights, they could be just an inch or two above. The LEDs should be at least 12 inches above your plants. Too close and actually they do give off too much light and actually be heat on them and you don't want to do that. But I would definitely go with the LED, anything that's labeled for a plant light. And I know um, some of them are then adjustable. You can pick what kind of light you're going to use, whether it's the red, the blue, or the white light, um, or all three at once. So just look at one that's labeled as a plant light and I recommend getting an LED light, even though it may cost you more. It's better in the long run. Uh, one dead duck. Uh, I hope that's a, a, a tongue-in-cheek name. I hope you don't have dead ducks in your yard. Um, <laughs> have you gotten your copy of Lisa's new book yet? Thanks, I can't wait. Yes, um, I actually was able to preview Lisa's book before it was published. She had me do some uh, checking it out and actually write a review for it. So I got an, an early digital copy and I have gotten my uh, printed copy of the book a few weeks ago. It is a great book, lots of great information in it. There's actually three new books out recently, the one from Lisa, the one from Lenny Larkin, which is all about the business side of cut flowers. It doesn't tell you how to grow flowers, but it tells you how to make money doing it. And then another book from Alan Armitage, which is the cut flower handbook or uh, cut flower field guide. All three of those, I was able to get an early copy, uh, digital copy to kind of review it and uh, proof it for them basically and look through it. Um, recommend all three of them. They're all a little bit different each one, but if you can get all three of them, recommend doing them all. Ah, 11 roots flowers. Any tips on stock? I've tried numerous times and they dampen off every time. Make sure you have good air circulation. Damping off is often caused by uh, being too wet and too damp down at the root, at the soil level. So having a fan blowing on the plants 24 hours a day and always water from the bottom if possible so that the soil stays dry on the top. And remember that the stock lights a warm start at 70 degrees, but then after they're up a little bit, after a week or so, you want to lower the temperature and it likes it in the 60s then. Um, that's another great plant to do a Google search for stock culture sheet. And it might be under the botanical name Mathiola, M-A-T-T-H-I-O-L-A. -T -T -I -I um, and it'll give you really specific temperatures needed to get the great crop out of those. Soil blocks work great first year, but three weeks in, they get what looks like salt on the top. Any ideas? That is something either in your soil, in your soil mix, in your water. Basically, it is, you call it salt, but it's a mineral deposit. Um, you just want to possibly filter your water. Um, if you have a water softener in your house or water treatment, that's usually not good for plants, especially seedlings. So if you have a water treatment or for a uh, water softener in your house, run the water through a Brita type pitcher filter first to get any stuff like that out. Or if you have city water, you might have excessive chlorine in the water. So it's also a good idea to filter the water and let it sit out and let the chlorine evaporate. But that is a mineral deposits in the top of the soil. Um, as long as your plants are growing okay, it's not gonna hurt, but there's something in your, so in your water or your soil that's causing that, some kind of mineral. Oh, here's the going. Any advice on finding eyes on dahlia tubers? Um, well, you know, the, the eyes are going to be up near the top where it was where that tuber was attached to the stem of the plant last year. 
So all the rest of the tuber will grow roots. The eyes are only at the very tip. Usually, they're, depending whether you're buying individual tubers, you'll see one end has like a little nubby, lumpy spot on it. The eyes are going to come on there. Um, if you're trying to divide tubers, it's hard to see them until they're actually sprouting. If you look really close, you might see a little dimple or a little uh, different color spot on what was the old stem of the plant at the tip, at the top end of the eye, at uh, the top end of the tuber. Um, the other idea is just spray them with the hose once with, with warm water and let them sit and that'll get them to sprout eyes in a few days. Put them in a warm spot around 70 or 75 degrees and give them a week and then you'll have eyes showing. Oh, here's a good one. How can I prevent thrips? I had an issue when I ran onto this last year. The only way to really prevent thrips is to use insect net netting, which is, is almost as fine as like a, um, the screen is very, very fine. It's, it's called thrips netting, thrip screen on your greenhouse or tunnel. It's kind of expensive and difficult to do. Um, more important is get rid of any plant degree, plant debris and trash and weeds in the tunnel. So make sure it's very clean start. Um, you don't want to be cleaning it up right before you plant the ranunculus because then the thrips are still there, the thrip eggs. So you want a nice clean tunnel before you plant. And the other option is sprays. Um, there are some beneficials that will take care of thrips. I can't remember the actual name, but if you look up beneficial insects, um, you'll find one that's listed for thrips. But that would have to be in a tunnel where they can contain those beneficial insects in there. Uh, this is uh, Julie Bully again about her plants are not growing. They planted in January, February, said they're all the cool season flowers and they're just not growing. Something else is wrong. Either your soil, your water pH might be way off from the water in your house. Um, where there, if your pH is way off, plants can't take up the nutrients that are in the fertilizer. Um, but I would definitely try and get them warmer and more light. It, it usually makes things grow. Um, but if you can, check your water and see if there's something in your water that's making your pH really high or really low. Uh, Marlaska's asking, the Fort V soil blocking mix, do we need to add anything to it or just water? Shouldn't you just need to add water? But if you're growing plugs are longer term, something like Elysianthus or uh, Eucalyptus that's going to be growing for 12 weeks, you need to add some fertilizer later on, but starting out a quick crop, like a snapdragon or a zinnia is only in there for three or four weeks. You shouldn't need to add anything to them, except for maybe a little fertilizer toward the end. <clears throat> uh, Mrs. K. Bowers, what is your favorite fertilizer for flower seedlings in a 72 cell flat? <clears throat> My favorite fertilizer is a commercial fertilizer that all the big greenhouse growers use. It's basically commercial <clears throat> commercial type miracle grow. It comes from Peter's Fertilizer. Um, you buy it in a 40 pound bag. It's the blue liquid it makes, the blue powder that makes the liquid. Alternative to that is to use miracle grow, or if you want to use the fish emulsion fertilizer, that's fine. Uh, just know that fish emulsion fertilizer or even the miracle grow at its recommended rate is a very mild fertilizer. So you want to use it at least once a week and um, that'll make a big difference. A few years ago, I had a customer sent me pictures of some snapdragons that were yellow and terrible looking, not growing. And I had her use fertilizer on them. Uh, I told her to use miracle Grow, and literally within 10 days, they were green and were fine. She just, they were starving for fertilizer. Um, she was using fish emulsion, but something, for some reason, that wasn't working. And also, she was growing uh, too wet, which too wet, a lot of plants will yellow out. They just can't take up water then, and the, uh, the fertilization doesn't do any good. Uh, Flowers Nightingale in Zone 7B, New Jersey. When can I scatter poppy seeds to have blooms this summer? I did some a few weeks ago and I don't see anything sprouting. Um, where well, the poppies are not going to sprout until the weather is right. They're not going to sprout where you still have them freezing nights. They're going to sit out there and get stratified by the, the cold nights and warm days until those seeds know the temperature is right and then they're going to sprout. Um, you could put some more down now. You would not want to put them out in May or June. That's too late. Um, I always like to say that seeds are a lot smarter than we think they are. If you put those poppy seeds out there two weeks ago, they can sense the temperature of the soil and the amount of moisture, and they're going to grow when they know it's perfect for them to grow. They're not going to sprout too soon. Uh, the other option, you can also spread poppy seeds in the fall. They might sprout in October and then over winter, or they may just sit there till spring and, and sprout when the time is right. But you can still 
direct sow the poppy seeds until in New Jersey 7B, probably until mid to late April, but wouldn't go any later than that. Um, 410 blooms. Can snaps be started now for bloom in the fall? Um, you wouldn't start them now for the fall. Um, if you might know, snapdragons have four groups, one, two, three, four. One blooms in the winter, four blooms in the summer, two and three bloom in spring and fall. So you'd want to plant a number two or three snapdragons, or sometimes it'd be number three, four. It would be a combination number. But you want to start those about 12 weeks before you want them to bloom. So if you want to bloom October 1st, count back four months, and that's when you'll start the seed for those. Grow them about three or four weeks in the plug tray or in the soil blocks, then plant them out for blooms about 12 weeks after you sow the seed. Uh, this is a good question here. Uh, Julie Boley is asking, at what point in the growing cycle are you supposed to use root shield for lysianthus? Or do you just dunk them in root shield dilution right at planting? Uh, you said it right there, perfect. You dunk them in root shield at the time of planting, and then you can even water in with the water that you dunked it with. Um, but it's getting the root shield solution on the root zone at the planting time is what you want to do. The other really important thing to know about root shield, it has a very short shelf life. You should be buying a new box every year because it does not hold to use it year after year. It's, the shelf life is four to six months if stored in the refrigerator. Leaving out in a hot greenhouse or tunnel, it's going to kill the organisms and it's not going to do any good at all. So store it in your refrigerator and use it up. So get this, um, asters, any other plants you're putting out, go ahead and use the root shield on it. Page, I'm planning on growing calla lilies in crates. When is a good time to start then? Then we're growing in a high tunnel on 6B. One thing to know about callas is they like a warm start. They like to be 70 degrees right when they're planted. It can be a little bit cooler afterwards, but they like a 70 degree start. So you don't want to try and start them too soon. Um, you're going to grow them, uh, say you're growing them in crates, so you put five bulbs per crate and plant them about nine weeks before we want them to bloom. Calla bulbs are available year round. So you can get them shipped in if you need a wedding or an event, you know, early August, just get them 10 weeks before that um, and they're fine to grow. The only thing to remember is in the summertime, they don't like to be really hot um, once they're up and growing. And by hot, I mean 90 and 100 degrees. So if you're growing that time of the year, I recommend putting them in partial shade um, or even under a bench in a greenhouse in your tunnel. Um, you just don't want them too hot once they're up and growing. Um, you're saying you're growing them in crates. You could even plant them in the crates and they're not going to be up for about two weeks. So you plant them in the crates, water them once really well, and then store the crates someplace at 70 degrees. If you have a cooler that's not been used for cooling right now, you could have a space heater in that cooler, set it at 70 degrees, and just basically keep it warm enough, and then the cows will be up in about two weeks, and then move them into your tunnel. Uh, Smoflo, I guess that's the S-M-F-L-O-O, -O, Smoflo is asking, what is a good pH level? For most cut flower, it's in the six and a half range. Um, there's a few that take lower, some higher, but 6.5 range is what you want to aim for. Uh, here's a good question from Chris Rye. First time growing lilies, can I store them in the fridge to succession plant at 30 degrees? No, you don't want to do that. The reason why is most refrigerators aren't 30 degrees. Your freezer is down around zero and refrigerators, you know, 36 or so. But even at 30, anything above freezing, they're going to grow. At 34 degrees, they're going to grow. Um, you can store them in the refrigerator, not frozen. You don't want to refreeze them after they've been shipped to you for about a week. But like I said, they're still going to grow. If you have a full-size cooler, the best way to do it to succession them and slow them down so you, um, they don't bloom at once is to plant them in the crates, water them really well, and put some in the cooler and hold them in there until they're sprouted about an inch. That can slow those down about two or three weeks. But you do not want to put lily bulbs that were shipped to you back into a freezer. That'll just ruin them. Nicole Jean Collette wants to know, what does root shield do? Root shield is a um, microorganism that basically protects the roots of plants from root diseases. Um, it's a really good product. A lot of big growers that grow, um, you know, bedding plants and big cut flower growers use it all the time. It is a, a beneficial um, organism that protects the roots from root disease. Uh, Nicole is asking what, uh, no, I'm sorry, Julie is asking the books that I mentioned. Well, it's the Cut Flower Handbook, which is from Lisa Ziegler. You can get this at the gardenersworkshop.com. The 
Oh, I got them in the other room. I can't remember the name of the one by Lenny Larkin. It's the Cut Flower. I can't business manual. I think is what it's called. It's by Lenny L E N I E Larkin L A R K I N. And then the last one is by Alan Armitage, which is the Cut Flower Field Guide. Um, all three of them are available um, on Amazon, or you can get the um, Lisa's book from thegardenersworkshop.com. I was going to do a post later today on Instagram. I'll have pictures of all three if you go to my page, Dave M. Dowling. Um, I'll have a picture of all three of them. And then here's, what's the best way to force lilies in crates in a greenhouse? Um, basically, you're going to plant them in crates um, using potting soil, not field dirt, but soil that you've purchased, and you grow them in crates. There's uh, information online. If you go to the, the ballseed.com backslash cutflowers, there's a handout on there about growing lilies and explains a little bit about growing crates. Um, and also, the, if you Google in YouTube for ball seed color link, there's a whole video series that I did. Um, you can also access that from the ballseed.com backslash cutflowers webpage. And there's a link to the videos on there. And there's an entire video on growing lilies and crates and in the field. Um, here's a really good question here from Seeds of Life Farm. What's the coldest temperature Celosia can take if they're five week old? Celosia can never freeze. So definitely not a frost. Temperatures in the 30s and 40s gonna make them sit there and just get stunted. So it's better to keep them indoors than to plant them out and think you're gonna cover, cover them and protect them from freeze or frost. Um, they cannot take any kind of cold weather like that at all. Um, they, I would not plant it outside until your day temperatures are in the 60s and nights in the 50s. So many people try and push the uh, the calendar a little bit on celosias and plant them too soon. That's always a disaster. Um, just don't do it too soon. And one other question here from Nicole. Um, would you use root shield on everything? Yes, it can be used on everything. And yes, it is organic. Um, it's all produced by one company that produces it. So no matter where you buy it, it's going to get shipped from the factory. Um, so whether you buy it from, on Amazon or from your local greenhouse supply store, um, it's always going to ship directly to the factory, so it's always fresh when you get it. But again, it only has that four to six month shelf life. And I would not recommend buying it if you saw it in a store somewhere, like at a, at a garden center, because it's been on the shelf who knows how long. So, And one more question here from Maggie. Is it ever too late to pinch snaps? You would not pinch them once you see flowers buds forming. That's just too late. And I've gone over time a little bit, so I'm going to have to call it a day. Um, Lisa, I believe Lisa will be back next week for Ask the Flower Farmer next Wednesday at 1230 Eastern. I'm going to be doing it the fourth Wednesday of the month through June. So a couple more months, then I'll be back in the fall doing it the fourth Wednesday of the month. Until then, everybody have a great day.